Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. We're back with our boy to talk about this one today. Ah, uh, I wish you were my mother, Una. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to read this one just in my vernacular. It's free verse, so we're just going to kind of go through this here. Do it. Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no crystal stare. It's head tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I's have been climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you set down on the steps, cause you find it's kinder hard. Don't you fall now. For I still going, honey. I still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Published December 1922, which, okay, as a fellow history buff, kind of a tumultuous time. There's a lot going on in the world at this point in time. <laughs> No, oh, in 1922 is crazy. You've had World War One, which completely altered the face of the planet forever. You've had the Spanish flu, which the first modern pandemic. You've had the introduction in basically electricity, running water, uh, new political geospheres. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. And our nearest and dearest friend, Prohibition, has been rolling on for a couple of years now, too. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, no booze. Oof, we would uh, we would not survive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, as a father, that one would would hurt me personally. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say this: the mother's seeing these things. She says, "You're going to face hardships, and how do I, how do I prepare my my child? How do I prepare the next generation?" And she does it through this elaborate metaphor of of life being climbing stairs where there's obstacle upon the stairs and i don't know about you but i totally had flashbacks to home alone when they're walking <laughs> up with the tar and the nails and it is hard right but it's all about conveying that you know life is an uphill struggle and not only that the idea of having to walk upstairs especially now as an older man as my knees start to give away it is something that is difficult, but I think kind of rewarding too. Like when I get to the top of the stairs every time and whether it was easy that time or difficult that time, I'm still kind of proud of myself. Like I did that. <laughs> and I think too, because how do we take this poem? Are we the child receiving the advice? Are we the parent giving the advice, right? Because it starts out with mm. the mom addressing the child. And to me, the way I look at this as now father of a seven-year-old, I'm like, okay, you hear these terms about the trophy generation and about uh, kids not working as hard as one of the fears, right? Now, now, whether that's true or not, it's another thing. But you do have a lot more instant gratification now, right? With with no effort, with with no need at all, I can pull out my phone and look up some app or video game and get instant pleasure. I can go on Amazon and instantly buy what used to be really rare games or, or things that I want in my life and just have them shipped to my house and I don't even have to leave, right? You and I grew up in the era where that, that didn't exist. We had to go to the store. We, we hit that pavement. We fought on Black Friday, the, the horde of zombies for the shirts and, and toys that we wanted. You know, how do you prepare a child, a kid these days, who, who almost has more shields, who has more comforts, which is, I think, a good thing. But but then when they do step on that nail or hit that tarred uh, floorboard, how do you prepare them for that pain? I think the poem is very complicated because there's a lot of different perspectives. As you said, you can take it. Am I the parent or am I a child receiving this information? And if I'm the parent giving this information, I'm giving the information, preparing my child for the unknown because their life is going to be different than mine. So I'm just saying, hey, I've lived a hard life and I'm trying to prepare you in case you have to endure the same hardships as me. And I think a lot of times, again, I'm not a parent, but I am a child and I know that my my parents always wanted better for me. So they worked really hard to try to give me a better life. And I think that's what a lot of parents want, right? But from the perspective of a child, 
and your parents are giving you this advice saying, oh, you know, I walked uphill both ways home and, you know, had to go through the snow and we didn't have the internet back in my day. You know, it, it almost is condescending of like, well, yeah, your hardships are different than my hardships. And, and as you pointed out, you know, you have all this instant gratification, but it's a double edged sword. You jump on your phone. There's all that cyber bullying. There's all the pressure. There's all the negativities that go along with it as well. And there is this kind of idea in this poem, I feel, as a generation gap that old and new have to find a way to communicate to get through the hardships of life together. Right. You know, you bring up an excellent point that the traumas shift, right? As opposed to necessarily the physical, that you do have a lot more mental illness and challenges with people and self, self-awareness, self self-confidence, right? Before, let's say I wore something that didn't look that great or I had a bad haircut. Like, how many people would tell me growing up? M- maybe my best friend, right? Like, maybe a couple of my close friends. Like, it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't yeah. widespread, but now you get a post, like a picture posted online on Instagram or something like that. And all of your friends can instantly give you feedback and they don't even have to give it to you. They can just not respond by not getting the hearts, not getting the likes that that picture normally does. You start having that self doubt, that mental, uh, you know, fear of just like, Oh, what's wrong. And that's when, like you said, the challenges are different now, but I think this poem is almost timeless because even if the challenges are different or or maybe the maybe what is facing us is different the result and goal of pushing past it is what's timeless right yeah i think that's the advice that as a parent you're going to want to give of even if you are suffering these hardships that are different than mine mine were tough to me they're they're mine they're personal and i was able to survive through them that should give you hope that even though we may not be suffering the same hardships, you can still persevere through them. You're my child. You have my strength. You have, you know, my wherewithal. You're going to get through this just like I did, and you're going to be better for it. And I think that's the hope of that, whether your your kid has a hard life or an easy life, they're going to get through it and be better off because you were able to prepare them. And, and I think, you know, when you look at the structure of this poem, it is free, but you have so many sentences here that start with and don't and ice like there's there, there's some repeating elements to this poem too and i don't know if it was intended but it gives me as a reader the feeling where i'm like okay we, we see these patterns we see these problems that pop up like like similar things but in the end just like how kind of we were just talking about we might have different solutions or different ways to get past it or different ways of thinking about it again i don't think that's necessarily what langston hughes was going for maybe it was rhythmic but it does mirror that element of life that we have where we see these patterns we see these problems and we have to learn how to work through them differently as individuals and as a community and we've talked a lot about the differences of generation and the differences of younger you know people today and and ourselves as a little bit older but as you said a lot of things are timeless Uh, love I mean, yes, I know that the interactions between human beings is very different on social media but trying to find love and find connection and find friendship that's as old as time uh you know uh, your physical appearance i mean yes maybe you're more scrutinized more often now but judging each other on what we look like and how we dress and uh, you know good looking or not or whatever that's that that hasn't changed there's a lot of things that have not changed for thousands of years for human beings and i i think that that being timeless is giving that advice of you you can get through this you can persevere through this if there's one controversial question for this poem for me it's sometimes it's better to give up because either someone else knows the solution so you should wait for them to be more efficient or you know maybe you're maybe you, 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 uh, judging a fish by its ability to climb a tree the fish will always think it's stupid right like we all have unique skills that we need to focus on. How do you know when perseverance is the answer versus redirecting that energy to someone else or someone who is better situated to persevere or to help you through that is? Like, how can you tell the difference for when you need help versus when you need to redirect in some problems? I think a lot of times you have to look inward for that. And then maybe you are looking for help elsewhere after you maybe you fail the number of times. Uh, maybe when you feel like you are going to give up, that's, that's the time. 
I think that's an internal question. I don't think there's any uh, fortune cookie answer. Uh, I don't think there's a right answer. I think that that's something that you're going to have to figure out yourself. And I think that trying to figure that out is one of the points of the poem is that's going to make you a better person. It's going to make you a stronger person. It's going to make you a more self-reliant person. And I think that's a lot of the, of what the mother is trying to say is that you need to be self-reliant, son, because sometimes you're the only person that you have to rely on. Yeah, I would agree with what you said and add on to that, that not only is there that personal, you know, in, introspection of what am I trying to work on? What am I trying to improve? But you'll notice she says, you know, look to the top. You, you, this is not a crystal stair. You're going to have to work through things. So at the same time, on top of the introspection, you have to look at the goal too. Is this something that you need, that you that, that is something that you're trying to accomplish and that you, you can get there with enough effort? And I think that external thing is something that the mother is almost making sure that the child focuses on too. At least that's that's my interpretation of it. Let us know in the comments down below what you guys think this poem might mean and what Langston Hughes might be prodding someone to think. We'll leave a playlist down below of other Langston Hughes talks. As always, my name has been Una. Appreciate you spending some time with us today. Peace. Peace.